Adnan here in Tuscaloosa these are the best of times and the fans are well aware that the ride for the tide is coming off a near flawless performance. Now college football's most powerful wave needs to keep crashing down on the rest of the SEC. From here in T-Town, it's ESPN College Football Primetime presented by GEICO. We got Houndstooth meeting up with Hottie Toddy, number one team in the country, steamrolling their way through the first month of the season. 4-0 Alabama against Ole Miss as Ole Miss will receive. Alabama won the toss and deferred. Jalen Jones on the return for the Rebels, and he has met with excellent coverage just beyond the 10-yard line. And that was Minka Fitzpatrick, the All-American defensive back on kickoff coverage, making the tackle. And there is Shea Patterson, his first year as the full-time starter. Of course, he came in and grabbed a lot of attention last year. Todd, number one in the SEC in quarterback rating and passing yardage. He's a fun guy to watch. He has tremendous arm talent, and he's what I would describe as an off-schedule playmaker. He does a lot of things when he extends plays with his eyes downfield and throws on the run. A very dynamic, instinctive quarterback. And Wilkins trying to get free and works his way back to the line of scrimmage. The impact players, they've got some great receivers, does Ole Miss. DeMarcus Lodge been very productive. A.J. Brown is back from an injury, had to leave the game at Cal. They need him healthy. Deron Payne, the big man in the middle for Alabama, and Minka Fitzpatrick, one of the most versatile players in all of college football in the middle of that defensive backfield. As quickly it is Dawson Knox. Yeah, I think Dawson Knox is another guy that could be a weapon for Ole Miss tonight. He had a stress fracture in his foot in summer camp. He had separated himself. He's back healthy now, and they expect him to play 40 to 50 snaps tonight. Third down and four. Patterson downfield, but unable to connect with DK Metcalf. Coverage came from Anthony Averett. This is going to be a game where there's going to be a lot of situations where there's one on one battles. Wide receivers from Ole Miss against defensive secondary people of Alabama. And that time, the first one out of the box, Anthony Averett won. Will Gleason, the Australian native, on to punt. And this is fielded by Diggs as he already crosses midfield and trying to spin for more yardage on a good return by Trayvon Diggs of 15 yards. Let's go to the field and check in with Holly Rowe. Well, the Alabama running game is so strong, but the passing game is yet to come along this season. Their best wide receiver has 20 receptions this season, Calvin Ridley, but the rest of the guys, just seven. Bo Scarbo, the next highest, was just seven as a running back. We asked their offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, is he concerned about that? He said, no, the ball is going where it needs to go in this offense. They think that they have got him moving different positions, making him very difficult to defend. We'll see what Ole Miss does with him tonight. He is in the midst of an incredible career. Damian Harris, who had an outstanding week against Vandy, 151 yards last week. Of course, the quarterback is the sophomore. Jalen Hurts and Todd, he's thrown 150 passes without an interception right now, the streak is. He is an excellent decision maker, and that's the part of his game that has really grown. He plays with tremendous poise. He showed that as a freshman. I think he is a much better quarterback this year in all aspects of the game. Second and six. Hurts with time, looking for a lock downfield, thrown to the outside of Robert Foster. We talked to Wesley McGriff, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, last night. He said, we have to survive the first 15 plays of this game. He said, Brian Dable and his experience from the NFL is a script guy. We have to survive the first 15 plays, and we can't let either one of those two receivers, Foster or Ridley, blow the top off of our defense early. We're down in six now for Hurts. Has plenty of time to choose an option, and wide open was Ridley, but he couldn't connect with him. It's good protection, a good clean pocket, 
And that's a throw in practice that Jalen Hurts is going to make nine out of ten times. But he just overshoots Ridley. He's got him wide open. It would have been an easy conversion for the first down, but an overthrown ball by Jalen Hurts. Good read, just didn't execute the throw. We'll see if J.K. Scott can pin Ole Miss inside the 10 here. Hartsfield makes the fair catch. Well, both defenses doing their job early on here in Tuscaloosa. I remember rolling out. In trouble. Cuts back the other way. And I saw a guy coming at me, and I, I don't know how I did. I just twirled out of it. Do you believe it? His first touchdown pass. Watch this grand imitation of Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel was my favorite player growing up. That was the eye-opening debut for Shea Patterson last year against AM when he led Ole Miss to a come-from-behind win and was just dazzling in his debut. He's going to need some Manziel-esque moments here against Bama. As they will keep it on the ground this time with Wilkins and Deron Payne able to make the tackle. Well, one guy that Shea Patterson is very glad to have back is his center, Sean Rawlings. He went down in the first quarter of the Cal game, and it really threw this team for a loop. They had to move their guard, Javon Patterson, in to start at center. They had a lot of miscommunication problems up front, penalties at the line of scrimmage. He's a key leader. Patterson being chased. And throws it away as it was Rashawn Evans getting after Shea Patterson. John Rawlings injured his ankle. Here he is, number 50. He's not 100%. He had surgery on Monday after the game. A little bit late picking up that blitz that forced Patterson out of the pocket. But his ability to be the line call and make all the protection calls so valuable, especially on the road in a place like this. Third and eight. And they're saying incomplete. As Metcalf was the target for Patterson. That's a case of a young receiver not knowing where he is on the field. Patterson did a nice job getting him the football. And the receiver just needs to know where the sideline is to get a foot down. I mean, he should have been able to work the sideline a little bit better and extend his hands for the catch instead of making the catch into his body. And that would have been a first down. So Diggs back out there, had the 15-yard return the last time Gleason punted away. Alabama went after that punt. That's why the fair catch at midfield. 36-yard punt, good field position for Jalen Hurts in the Tide when we return. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Some great feasts throughout Tuscaloosa all afternoon into the early evening. It's a great situation right here to go deep to their main guy right here, Calvin Ridley. Starting in a stack, probably will bring him in motion inside. Perfect field position. They had time during the timeout to get the play call they want. Stacked up with Foster. They're going to swing it instead to Ridley. And with Foster leading the way, a first down for Alabama. Now Auburn, Mississippi State has gone final. Auburn just rocked State 49 to 10. That three game stretch against the ranked opponents for Mississippi State. That big win against LSU doesn't look so big right yeah. now. Well, and for Auburn, credit the corrections that they made after the opening game to Clemson where they gave up 11 sacks. Their offense has been so much more productive since then. There's Harris as he lowers his head to the 35-yard line. This Alabama running game, again, last week they were devastating. Ran for almost 600 yards. But they... 
their quarterback is their leading rusher. He averages eight yards a carry. Damian Harris averages 8.1 yards per carry. Bo Scarborough up there as well. He's had the most carries of anybody. But they can attack you in so many ways in their offensive line playing very cohesive right now as a unit. Second and six, Jalen Hurts trying to get free, unable to do so. It'll be a loss of one, Zedrick Woods and Shepard on the tackle. And those are the kinds of plays that this Ole Miss defense needs to make. That was an RPO. He was reading down the field. Wesley McGriff very conscious of what Jalen Hurts does. That's Brian Dable, the new offensive coordinator at Alabama. 11 years as an assistant with the Patriots, 17 years in the NFL before coming to Tuscaloosa here this year. Third down and six now. Hurts. He's going to tuck. So capable in doing this and easily gets the first down and more inside the 10. And you get a glimpse of why some think he's the best runner on the team overall. Now, this is what makes him so difficult to defend. You cover the receivers, but you better rush with discipline or have a spy. There's nobody spying on the quarterback. And Jalen Hurts reads that and takes off. Now, I think the defensive end, Marcus Haynes, was responsible for spying on the quarterback, but he got tied up by the center, Bradley Bozeman. And Jalen Hurts made him pay for it. First and goal. Play action to the end zone. Should have been intercepted by Hartsfield. And see, if you are playing on the road against the number one team in the country, that is a play you have to make. If he is going to make a mistake, and Jalen Hurts doesn't make many mistakes, this team has not turned the ball over yet this year, you have to make that interception. I mean, that is a play that they gift wrap for you, and you don't capitalize. And now they still have the ball inside your 10 yard line. A streak of 154 passes without throwing an interception for Hertz. Second and goal. Here's Big Bo. Score it. Time. Bo Scarborough. Former Ole Miss kicker who transferred to Alabama. Papanastas hits the extra point. Missed opportunity for the Ole Miss defense. Should have had a pick. Instead, 235 pounds of power right down the middle. Number one Bama up a touchdown early. Hardest working players brought to you by Duluth. Here's some hard work from the O-line. Well, the right side. Watch the blocks by Lester Cotton and Matt Walmack, and all that Bo Scarborough is going to do is be patient and then find a seam right in between his right guard and his right tackle. This is beautiful execution and patience by Bo Scarborough. They took advantage of the interception that was dropped, came right back the next play, and got on the board with the touchdown. You can't do that to a great football team. You got to take those chances when you get them. J.K. Scott will now be kicking away as he hangs this high and short, fielded by Jones at the five-yard line. But once again, good coverage. Barely makes it out to the 20. Let's go to the studio to Adnan. First down. Let John McDavid clean up the penalty there on that kickoff. But many are asking that question concerning yeah. LSU Todd. We talked about the return of Sean Rawlings, who was injured in the Cal game two weeks ago. The other guy that was banged up in the first quarter, A.J. Brown, their leading receiver, 
This is a deep, explosive group of wide receivers, but A.J. Brown coming in, their top guy, probably trying to get him the football, I would think, in this possession just to get him involved in the game. Patterson's going to run it straight ahead. He's got a little wiggle to himself. Plan for success is brought to him. Late flag yeah, dumb. comes in. Alex Givens, I mean, just, just a, an extra hit after the quarterback had slid. There was going to be no contact on the quarterback because Shea Patterson had gone down. There's no foul for a late hit. The defender was pushed by his opponent onto the runner. There you go. Second down. Patterson's giving it up right away. Oh, there's the, there it was. It was Givens just pushing. I thought they were going to call it on Givens. I'm glad there was no call. Good decision by Shea Patterson to run. So six-yard run by Patterson. Threw it to the inside of Lodge incomplete. Let's look at that plan for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. You know what Ole Miss has been able to do through the air. Meanwhile, the other side has been the ground game of Alabama. Yet to have a turnover in the last 30 quarters. Could have been with the interception. That wasn't for the Rebels. Third and four. The slant picked off by Wallace. Levi Wallace. Well, what is DeMarcus Lodge doing? He just quit on the play. Beautiful play. No doubt by Wallace. I mean, this, you've got to win one-on-one -on -one battles. That's what this game comes down to. DeMarcus Lodge just quits on the play. Number five, and Levi Wallace not only gets the interception, he gets an escort into the end zone. We saw this all season last year with the non-offensive touchdowns and Alabama out in front early. One-on-one -on -one battles, wide receivers against defensive backs, and Alabama is winning those battles so far. It was the theme of last year, all the non-offensive touchdowns, and here a spectacular interception and pick six return by Wallace. Well, here's the matchup, and it's, you know, there's contact. Alabama likes to put their hands on you as defensive backs. But Lodge is a big receiver at 6'2", 200 pounds, and he just does not fight for this football. You've got to fight more for the football than that, and then you just can't give up on the play. He might not have made the tackle, but he gave no effort, and Levi Wallace takes it in for the touchdown. Levi Wallace, the senior from Arizona, who's number one in the SEC and passes defended. Let's go down to the field to Holly. Well, Nick Saban, the master psychologist, challenged his team this week. They were coming off a 59-0 win over Vanderbilt. But he wanted to make sure that they were not satisfied. Everybody started talking about Alabama as the number one team. But he wanted this team to be self-motivated, not externally motivated, internally motivated, to be as good as they possibly could be. Looks like they've already heeded their coach's advice. Pretty motivated down here on this Alabama sideline. Well... They are not a team that you can afford to make mistakes against because they capitalize. They are so efficient in all phases of the game, and that efficiency is the difference right now. Joan has to turn around to feel this, and tremendous coverage again. Let's go to the studio with that now. Dixon's second touchdown of the night. Well, get those guys in open space. They are so dangerous. Joe, we talked about the efficiency of this Alabama football team on offense, on defense, and, and special teams. What we've seen, their coverage units, they recruit all these four- and five-star guys. Right now, those young guys, the only way they get on the field is on special teams, and that's where they're shining right now. Now Wilkins with a lot of open space, up and over with the hurdle. Jordan Wilkins has been banged up early in the season. The healthiest he's been all year, and he looks healthy on this play. And Ole Miss needs more plays like that out of their running game. On the scene now, complete to Metcalf. 
Good. Quickly out to midfield for Ole Miss. A big RPO team. When they fake the run, their wide receivers are not running bubble screens. They're running vertical routes down the field. Wilkins again with a good gainer. Basically, if Alabama keeps two safeties deep, Ole Miss wants to try to run the football. That's Matt Luke, the interim head coach, was a starting center for three years at Ole Miss. He's been a part of the program for most all of his coaching career. He was elevated to the interim head coach on July 20th when Hugh Freeze resigned abruptly. Second and five now. Patterson, a lot of time downfield. Man open but overthrows Lodge. Had him. Jay Patterson knows he had him. You get those opportunities again. You need to capitalize. Demarcus Lodge, nice job getting separation this time from Levi Wallace. And the ball just overthrown. And Jay Patterson knows you don't know how many of those chances you get. He'll get a big play. Third and five. Tide coming after him. Patterson kept his balance, looking to shake free, and then is driven down by Isaiah Bugs. See, as soon as Ole Miss took their running back, Penniman, and, and motioned him out to an empty backfield, Alabama brought extra pressure. They brought more guys than Ole Miss could block, and Shea Patterson had to get flushed out of the pocket. Watch Penniman go in motion. As soon as that happens, you only have five blockers. And Alabama brings an extra defender free. That's the safety, Ronnie Harrison, that forces Patterson to leave the pocket. So Gleason will punt again. And Diggs with the fair catch just inside the 15. Of course, week three of the NFL is upon us. And ESPN's the place to be with a new time and a new team. Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern. They're going to get you all the breaking news and stories and injury updates. Get you set right up until kickoff. Then week four, Monday Night Football. Kirk Cousins and the Redskins taking on Kareem Hunt, the rookie sensation, and the three and Chiefs. And coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. Speaking of Kirk Cousins, I thought this was a great <laughs> tweet. He said, on the left, Bo Scarborough in the 10th grade. On the right, me in 11th grade. Now I know why Alabama never calls. Look at that photo. And here is the aforementioned Bo Scarborough. Had his fourth rushing touchdown of the year moments ago. Tackled by Gates. They have such depth and talent at the running back position. Scarborough, Damian Harris, a true freshman, Najee, Najee Harris. Josh Jacobs, they've got a lot of guys who they get the football to. All want their touches. Sort of like the team we saw last week yeah. in primetime. Georgia, who looked excellent again against Tennessee today. Second and seven, Hurts. Quickly to Calvin Ridley. That was so pure for a first down for the tie. Good quick decision by Jalen Hurts. One thing that you notice that's different with this Alabama offense under Brian Dable from the one that was under Lane Kiffin. You don't see Jalen Hurts looking to the sideline to change the call. Jalen Hurts is being asked to see things and make those decisions at the line of scrimmage. A lot more on his plate this year as a decision maker. And he's kind of really taken to that new role. Hurts. Good strike downfield to Cam Sims. And Sims turns it on inside the 10. They tried to go to Foster deep earlier in the game and missed. Now they go to the slot receiver, Cam Sims, the big receiver, a missed tackle opportunity. And the big receiver makes him pay for it inside the 10 yard line again. and goal Scarborough as he fights his way for a couple of yards it was Breland Speaks who met him there is Pamela Hertz Galen's mom comes from a great family has seen 
much athletic success. His brother was a quarterback at Texas Southern and is now a youth football coach back home outside of Houston, Texas. Unfortunately, his family's home was unaffected by the hurricane. Second and goal. Hurts to the end zone. Touchdown, Hale Henches. So many ways they can hurt you. Excellent skill, talent, an offensive line that is playing cohesively, and a quarterback who's making consistent decisions. Cole Miss was thinking Ridley all the way there when they saw pass was coming, and they let the tight end Henches get behind him to the back of the end zone. Young man just turned 19 years old in August. Had a sensational freshman year and already off to a great start as a super soft. Mom's got plenty to smile about, doesn't she? Well, Jalen Hurts making decisions. Right now he's reading DeMarcus Gates, the middle linebacker. Watch Gates get his eyes on Bo Scarborough on the play fake. And as soon as he stepped up, Hench is right behind him. And Jalen Hurts made the right decision of where to go with the football. See their the run balance game, for the Alabama yeah. offense, Todd. Their run game has been so good. You have to respect it. You have to try to get to the line of scrimmage. And then when your quarterback makes good decisions, it opens up everything. This will go for a touchback. Let's check in with that man. Always such a great setting there. Game day was treated the right way. And Blacksburg. See Brian Dable, his first year coming over from all the Super Bowl wins with the Patriots, and I think just bringing some stability after all the yeah. turmoil with Sarkeesian and Lane Kiffin at the end of last season. Patterson quickly gets it to Metcalf on the outside, and he shakes free all the way out towards midfield, finally tracked down by Minka Fitzpatrick. A missed tackle by Averett. Averett on the sideline there. Again, this receiving core is big, they're fast, and they're deep. And so you have to really kind of play everybody. They, they make you cover the whole field because there's no weak links at the wide receiver position. Uh, Metcalf tried to line up after making that reception and then all of a sudden just went down to the turf. Metcalf is the biggest of the wide receivers at 6'4", 225 pounds, redshirt freshman. Little hitch route and then the strength to break the arm tackle. He went face first into the turf. That's why he came up with a, a helmet full of grass. So I think if Fitzpatrick lost his helmet at the end of that as well. Yeah, he's got a pretty big divot right in the side of that powder blue helmet. Well, he is a big guy, 6'4", 225. He was so impressive early on in his freshman year, his true freshman year. Then he broke a bone in his foot, missed the rest of the season, so now comes back as a redshirt freshman. But one of those big targets, capable athletes for Ole Miss. First down at midfield. Patterson trying to extend the play as Bugs applies some pressure, launches it downfield, and it is caught by Demarcus Lodge. And that is where Shea Patterson is most dangerous when he extends the play and when he rolls to his right. Because when he scrambles, he is primarily scrambling to throw, and he does that much more effectively as a right-handed quarterback when he goes to his right than when he goes to his left. 35-yard hookup. 
between Patterson and Lodge. And here's A.J. Brown as he cuts back and gains a little extra yardage. They didn't know if he was going to go this week at a sprained MCL. He got injured in that loss to Cal two weeks ago. I would say it's absolutely essential for Ole Miss to get in the end zone on this possession. Down 21 points right now. Patterson on the slant, batted away that time by Levi Wallace, who had the pick six on a similar route moments ago. And a flag is down. We'll check on that. Penalties have been a problem for Ole Miss this year. I think this one's going to go against Alabama. Illegal motion. Nope. Number 12 offense. Moving towards the line of scrimmage prior to the snap. I go penalty. Second down. This team had 16 penalties for 113 yards in their last game on the road at Cal, and many of them were like that before the snap penalties. You know, Matt Luke, the interim coach, says, hey, we didn't handle the crowd noise at Cal. Well, crowd noise at Cal. Yeah. We got 102,000 here yeah. at Flatbush. How many did they have they at had 37,000 <laughs> at the game at Cal. A little different here in T-Town handling crowd noise. Second and nine. He looks Wilk Wilkins' way and then looked to the end zone and now has to come back to him. They may lose yardage here as Fitzpatrick was waiting on Jordan Wilkins. Now, Minka Fitzpatrick may be the best player on the field. He is such a versatile defender. He can play all six positions in the secondary, and whichever position they put him at, he's the best they've got. He plays a little bit of everything. There's Shea Patterson's parents. A very, very critical third down play here. For the Rebels. Third and 14. Over the middle, inside the 10 to Jefferson. He's going to be about three yards short of what they needed. It'll bring up a fourth down. Matt Luke is going to opt to get points right here, which I, I understand. You're on the road. Alabama is getting after you. You got to get some points. I mean, touchdowns are going to, you're going to need touchdowns eventually. You're not going to beat Alabama with field goals, but you got to get some points out of this drive. Gary Wonderlich in to attempt the 26 yarder. He was actually injured at Cal, too. Hurt his hamstring on his plant leg attempting a kick. And they are happy to have him back, his 52nd career field goal. They got a little bit of magic out of Shea Patterson on that drive to get on the board. You know, he comes from good lineage when it comes to some magic because his grandfather, George, actually toured with the Harlem Globetrotters playing for the Washington Generals. And Shea himself, he's got a little bit of that razzle-dazzle that you would see when you're touring around with the Globetrotters, just making some things happen. Well, again, he is a guy who makes plays when things break down. His ability to extend plays with his legs, maybe he has that music playing in his head as he's making these kind of plays. Very instinctive and in many ways resembles Johnny Manziel, who he used to love to watch play. And then just a few moments ago tonight, a big play forced out of the pocket. Again, rolling to his right, eluding pressure, eyes downfield, and the long throw on the run to Demarcus Lodge. So his grandfather George played in the NBA for the Pistons, but he wore that number 20 with the Washington Generals when he was touring against the Globetrotters, and that's why Shea wears number 20 as a quarterback. Holly? Well, you guys talked about a little razzle-dazzle. Well, Shea Patterson has said that Johnny Manziel was his favorite player growing up, and they actually brought some old tapes out of Johnny Manziel this week for film study. The two games against Alabama that gave this Alabama defense such a difficult time when Texas A&M played them with Johnny Manziel, they put those tapes on for Shea Patterson, give him a little inspiration on how a mobile quarterback can extend plays, a little razzle-dazzle can extend plays, and it did, ending up in points on that last drive. And Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, says we want him to be intelligently aggressive. There's that fine line between that and reckless. But they need a little bit of that magic tonight. Did get on the board, though, with the field goal from Wonderlich. Damian Harris, nice cutback. 
And a good gain out to the 31 yard line. Damian Harris last year led the team with 1037 yards rushing. Had a career high in the big win at Vanderbilt a week ago 151 yards on only 12 carries. He's been very productive and efficient to start this year. How about three touchdowns on yeah. only 12 carries last week too. Here's the quick swing to Ridley turns the quarter for another tied first down. Really nice block out there by Devonta Smith the freshman wide receiver number six. You throw those kind of quick throws to your wideouts. You got to have the other guys blocking downfield. Nice job by Smith on that play. Hertz kept it. Harris is going to try to help him with a block. As Hertz tried to find some room, maybe a gain of two that time. Demarcus Gates with the tackle. You know, when Old Miss won here two years ago, they made a lot of big plays with their quarterback, Chad Kelly, their wide receivers, but they also forced five turnovers. That really helped their effort. This Alabama team has gone now, what, 31 quarters, dating back to last season, really till the first half of the Iron Bowl against Auburn. They haven't turned the ball over. They're the only team in college football that has not turned it over yet this season. Second and seven and a good tackle by Hartsfield coming up as well as Gates getting involved with the run stop. Big play right here for the Ole Miss defense. They've had a couple nice plays on first and second down. This is the money down third down and when you have a quarterback like Jalen Hurts you better pay attention. You better rush with discipline and you better have somebody in a spy technique to account for him. I think it's going to be number 38 right there. Marquise Haynes is going to be the spy this time on Jalen Hurts. Showing some pressure right up the middle. Third down and seven. Hurts downfield and gets it complete to the freshman Jerry Judy. Ole Miss decided to come with pressure. Watch the inside blitz. That left man to man. Jalen Hurts read it, went to the outside route. Beautiful throw. That's the same route he overthrew Ridley on the first possession. That time beautifully thrown to Judy. Now quarterback run here as Hurts gets two yards. That is the end of the first half. First half. That saw Jalen Hurts throw a touchdown. Saw Scarborough run one in and has the tied up 21 to 3. Glad you're with us watching the SEC on ESPN. Alongside Todd Blackwich and Holly Rowe, I'm Joe Tessator with you. Start of the second quarter here. In Tuscaloosa, Alabama up 21 to 3, number one team in the country with the ball on the Ole Miss 29 yard line. Second down and eight. Scarborough gets about a yard and a half. Todd, I marvel at how. Consistent Alabama is through all the years we've been covering them 68 straight wins against unranked opponents 18 straight SEC wins. Yeah. I mean you can look at a lot of different numbers the one that stands out to me this tonight is the 55th game that Alabama has played as the number one ranked team under Nick Saban. Right. They are 48 and 6 in those games coming into tonight their level of consistency is is staggering in today's world of of college football and parity and guys only staying three years instead of four or five it's amazing and that's all he complains about every time we talk to him is how hard it is to get kids to buy into that consistency of performance well and he does it better than anybody Nick Saban Jerry Judy little stop and start going to be a yard short and you, you think about the others who have done that at that level being number one and Saban sits atop Woody Hayes and Bobby Bowden. Yeah. 
Urban Meyer has put together a pretty impressive record himself at two places at Florida and Ohio State, but not the same number of games to this point. They recruit, they develop, and they challenge guys every day to get better. Now offense is on the field here on fourth and very short with Scarborough and Robinson in the backfield with Jalen Hurts. A very good runner himself. Here's fourth down. Scarborough pushes ahead with ease to move the chains. Well, they started out by showing an unbalanced line with the right tackle. They shifted him back over. They kind of overloaded the right side. They pulled Pierce Baker, the left guard, to lead the play and got the first down easily. It all starts up front. For Alabama you can talk about Jalen Hurts you can talk about the running backs Calvin Ridley we've seen a couple other receivers make plays tonight but this offensive line group the better they get the more devastating this offense is going to be and fresh legs with Josh Jacobs play action Hurts backs up to the 30 and another touchdown for the tie Josh Jacobs Pretty nice when they put you in for one play and they call your number and throw it to you for a touchdown. Efficiency. Seen four different running backs check in for Alabama. Jacobs the latest. And just like that, the touchdown reception. The sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And just keep adding to the total for Jalen Hurts. Alabama's last touchdown, a beautifully designed play. All the action is going to go this way. And the guy who gets put in conflict is the middle linebacker right there, Dietrich Bing Dukes. Watch Jacobs just pause and delay a little bit at the line of scrimmage. Jalen Hurts knew he was going there with the football. Everything looked like they were rolling right to throw right. And the back, Josh Jacobs, played it beautifully. He paused at the line of scrimmage, caused Bing Dukes to go for the fake and ran by him for the touchdown. What and execution. And for Jalen Hurts, that's now 45 career touchdowns responsible for. Six passing touchdown of the season. I want to tell you something about that touchdown when we come back after this kickoff. We'll do that right after we check in with that now. that come back Todd I was going to say is the, the patience that Josh Jacobs showed on that play here's a guy who's been sitting on the bench waiting for his chance to come in and touch the ball they call his play they put him in you would think he'd be anxious to get into that route but he had to sell it at the line of scrimmage I am so impressed with the patience he showed on that play to make it work that's a great point paid off with the touchdown reception Now Patterson out across to the 32 yard line brought down by Hamilton. I really thought that quarterback runs by design like that one would have to be a big part of the package tonight for Shea Patterson and Ole Miss because they have not been able to run traditionally very well against anybody this year. Quarterback runs are a way to steal some yards against this Alabama defense. Pressure came in from Fitzpatrick because it was incomplete. He was looking for Lodge, and a flag is down as Patterson went down. We talked about the versatility of Minka Fitzpatrick. He covers man-to-man. -man. He plays deep safety. He also blitzes off the edge like he did that time. Patterson still able to make a pretty accurate throw under duress. Best interference. 39 defense. Tell the results in an automatic first down. It was tagged on Levi Wallace.
Now he just had a lot of body contact, had his hands all over the receiver. What Lodge did a nice job of, of getting inside Wallace and just kind of shielding him with his body. So a first down as Patterson is going to launch it downfield again as he was trying to find Lodge streaking down the near side. We're going to have a late hit on the quarterback as well, I think, after the play. Pass interference, roughing the passer, 32 defense, 15 yard penalty, and an automatic first down. And that was Rashawn Evans, who they had coming in hard on Patterson. Yeah, it's just not necessary. It was well after the throw. It wasn't a malicious hit, but it was an unnecessary hit on the quarterback. The quarterback's in a defenseless position as he throws it. It's kind of an easy call to make. Well, that moves it past midfield for Ole Miss. Panaman. As he runs the ball inside the 40 yard line, tackled by Payne. To run it just enough to keep Alabama's defense on us, whether it's a running back running or the quarterback running, you can't just go back and throw it every down. And Phil Longo knows that. Got to try to keep them a little bit off balance. Fifth ranked run defense in the country is Bama. Second and six. thrown to the outside of Metcalf. Alabama comes in with their dime package now. They are very personnel conscious. They're going to try to match your personnel. When they get you to third and six or more, they're going to go with the dime. As Jeremy Pruitt, the defensive coordinator, expects some kind of pressure as well with the sixth defensive back package in the game. Ole Miss is 0 for 5 on third downs. Third and six. Tony Brown was creeping up to that line as Patterson checked and now shifts Penniman over. A lot of movement trying to confuse the offensive line, the protection, and Shea Patterson has to call timeout. Play clock was running down. Mississippi. As Bryant Denny was roaring. We'll take a short break and come right back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. And Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's perfect. You know all about the football national championships, but gymnastics, softball, women's golf, men's golf, a couple years there. This has been a town of titles as Tuscaloosa. 28-3, number one Alabama. Key thing here is making sure their protection is communicated correctly between the center and the running back Penniman. Pressure in the A gap. Patterson is swarmed and brought down by the All American Minka Fitzpatrick as this is whistled down after the sack and a loss of 12 yards. They get you in that situation. They can bring pressure from a lot of places. Watch the top of your screen. This is where the pressure is going to come. Minka Fitzpatrick, the back, Penniman, doesn't do anything in the protection. Again, there's got to be communication of knowing where the people are coming from. That wasn't an all-out blitz. It should have been picked up, but a lack of communication. And Penniman, I think, going the wrong way as the back. As Gleason punts away. Fielded near the 20 by Diggs. He's an interesting character, Minka Fitzpatrick. Take a listen on his thoughts of the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Muhammad Ali, I liked his character, and he used boxing as a platform to kind of help people out and show them that even though he started from nothing, that he could be something important in the world, and that's something that a lot of people need. Minka Fitzpatrick from Old Bridge, New Jersey, the All American defensive back for Nick Saban's tie. So 
And in Harris with a gain of three. You know, I saw Micah Fitzpatrick on the field before the game, well before the game, doing something I've not seen. He had Tony Brown, one of their extra defensive backs out there, and he was basically putting him through a one-on-one -on -one workout on coverage, and he was running the routes, and he was running them full speed. And he and Tony Brown were both drenched in sweat by the time they finished. And it wasn't just two or three routes. It was like 10 or 12 routes. And he was coaching them up every single rep. That is a real leader on this football team. Harris again, you know, make a great respect for Ali and the social justice role he played. This is the 50th anniversary of SEC integration. We're celebrating Nate Northington. But it was John Mitchell in 71, first African-American to play football for the Crimson Tide. Went on to become an assistant coach for the Tide. Played a big role in helping recruit Ozzie Newsome on a day where we have taken great time to discuss that topic. The 50th anniversary of Nate Northington taking the field for Kentucky against Ole Miss. Here's Hertz on third and three as he hits the accelerator. Holly. Joe, you spoke of that history that was made against Ole Miss when the SEC was integrated. And Ole Miss has really embraced the role that they played in that welcoming Nate Northington back to campus. They have had him come back several different times and speak on campus. They've honored him at football games. And they do have a Nate Northington award that they give out yearly at Ole Miss. So I just love that the opposing school also embraced that historical moment. That is a great footnote on a story that's been well celebrated throughout the day, Holly. Here's Foster now coming all the way around swinging and get loose into open space Robert Foster. You know one of the things Brian Dable has added to this offense is the threat of the jet sweep. A lot of times it's just there as eye candy just to get the linebackers eyes off of different things. That time they fake the sweep fake the inside run and then through the swing pass out to Foster for a nice game on the play. Longtime NFL assistant and offensive coordinator Brian Dable now his first year as the play caller here for coach Saban. Hurts first down pass and once again Josh Jacobs similar to what they did for the touchdown strike not long ago. A really nice job by Hurts getting rid of the football under duress. Victor Evans the defensive end was right there and Hurts had to hang in under pressure and deliver the football and he made an accurate throw. His decision making Joe he, he is so calm and he plays with such poise nothing flusters him and I just think he has stepped up his game in terms of his knowledge of the offense Scarborough bounces off a would be tackler and muscles his way inside the five a flag is down we will check on that holding 82 offense 10 yard penalty first down. The tight end Irv Smith Jr. with the holding penalty. Haven't been too many mistakes by this Alabama offense. There he is on the end of the line, number 82. Starts off in good position, but as he feels his man get away from him, kind of grabs a jersey right there. He had his hands in good position to start the block, but as Haynes tried to separate, he grabbed the jersey, and that's what drew the flag. So brings it back to the 24 yard line. First and 20 after the penalty. And this time Scarborough met and then pushed down as Breland Speaks was involved. Huh? Talked about Brian Dable. His first association with Nick Saban was as a GA at Michigan State back in the late 90s and the other GAs on that staff at the time Josh McDaniel his best friend who is the coordinator for the New England Patriots Mel Tucker who we met last week is the defensive coordinator in Georgia and Adam Gase who's the head coach of the Miami Dolphins that's a pretty good set of GAs uh, to break in under Nick Saban second and 19 see what Dable comes up with here as he was looking to set up the screen with Scarborough listen when your resume has Saban Foundation and then the rings with Belichick. Yeah. You've had a pretty good career. Yeah. And Parcells mixed in there That's as well. Right. You know, a little bit of all of those guys. Stable was with the Browns, the Dolphins, the Chiefs. Of course, the Super Bowl wins with the Patriots. 
for a decade up in New England. And now down here, and he says, listen, I'm really enjoying Tuscaloosa, as is his wife, Beth. And congratulations to the Dables as they welcomed a two-week-old son, Luke. Their oldest is 18, and then there's little Luke. Number six. Third and 19. Hurts extending the play. Rifled that thing into the end zone to Ruggs, who couldn't haul it in, and a flag comes in late as he was slow to get up. Hurts did a beautiful job of keeping his eyes downfield as he scrambled, as good of a runner as he is. The team's leading rusher coming into the ball game. He knew they needed long yardage after the penalty, and he stayed in there to throw it. He made a foul. beautiful throw. Targeting. 23 defense. Penalty's half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. This play is now under video review. And that's Breon Dixon, who they say targeted Henry Ruggs there. You see Hertz eluding the pressure. Eyes downfield, gets his shoulder square rolling to his left. Should have been caught for a touchdown. I'm not sure how you call this targeting. The receiver was going down to the ground after the miss. He did kind of come in with his head, but he didn't hit him with his head. Bill Lamagne is our rules expert. Bill, do we have forcible contact there? Well, you hit the key word there. He does have some contact to the head neck area. However, I would not deem that forcible contact, and I would expect the replay official to reverse this and there'll be no penalty whatsoever. I mean, the formula is pretty simple, right, Bill? We say it all the time. You have to have one of the indicators, right? The launch, the crouching, the leading with the helmet or forearm or fist, the crown of the helmet, plus the forcible contact. I, I totally agree with you. It, it sounds simple. Out on the football field, right. yeah. as fast as these guys are moving, I don't blame the officials for erring on the side of safety. That's their number one thing. We've got to make this game safe. But at the same time, I would not put this in the classification. Of the and, and by the way, if you're sitting at home and saying, hold on a second, that was his wrist and forearm that the defender came in with. Well, that counts. The, you, is, yeah. If you're leading with the forearm, the fist, the hand, the elbow, it doesn't matter. It can be targeting, but you have to have the forcible contact. You got it. After review, review there is no targeting on the play. The result of the play is an incomplete pass. Fourth down. Nice job, Lamagne. Yep. So Andy Papanastas will come in with the field goal attempt. Told you he played at Ole Miss early on in his career, transferred to Bama. Young man who was struggling in scrimmages in fall camp, but he has been a pleasant surprise in season. And it's a 40 yard attempt. Eight for 10 on the year. And that was off the mark. Matt Luke is saying job well done. Keep them fired up coach. Bama up 28 to 3 here at home as we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Geico. Taco Bell proud partner of the college football playoff. This is the Taco Bell student section here at one of the game's great fortresses Bryant Denny Stadium. Joe Todd and Holly with you here in Tuscaloosa. Glad you're with us. Ole Miss on offense with Shea Patterson. Pass for 93 yards through an interception. He's returned for a pick six earlier tonight. Flag is down as Jordan Wilkins tries to dance for extra yardage. Yeah, dancing doesn't work against Alabama's defense. Holding. Number nine. Offense. Ten yard penalty. First down. It's Dawson Knox, the tight end. Former walk on played high school at Brentwood Academy in Nashville. And it's because of the dancing. Dawson Knox, not a whole lot there for a hold, but that's a play where the running back just needs to get north and south, get his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, and get whatever yardage you can get.
First and 20, and Patterson just trying to dive back towards the line of scrimmage. Big Raquan Davis is closing him off. 300 pound sophomore, he is a physical specimen. Coming into this game, Ole Miss averaging 427 yards a game passing and under 70 yards a game rushing. That's not the kind of balance that you want against an Alabama defense, especially when you're down on the scoreboard. Second and 22. Being chased again. Ball is loose. Ball is out, and there is a fight for it. And they're saying Ole Miss was able to recover. Looked like it was Anthony Jennings who forced the fumble. As Knox was able to recover it. Patterson a little loose with the football. He just, when you start moving around the pocket like that, and you know the history of this Alabama defense last year, 15 non-offensive touchdowns and forcing turnovers. You got to secure the football if you're scrambling around those bodies in crimson jerseys. Third and 22. As they quickly get it to Wilkins, and he is met by Keith Holcomb. Mom and dad know it's yeah. not the same as going up against UT Martin. A few weeks ago, he set the school record with 489 yards passing. This is a different beast on the road against number one. As Diggs makes the first man miss already past midfield. Ball is out. And it looks like it went right into the hands of another Alabama player, and it did to the Tide's advantage. And they will have prime position again with just over four minutes until the half. I think it was Najee Harris, the highly touted freshman running back, who was able to come up with the football there. The Tide rolling early. This was the fumble at the end of that punt return, but the five star running back out there on special teams with the good hands. Boy, that is ugly. I can only imagine the fine bomb show come Monday. Of course, it's always supposed to be a circle the date on Alabama schedule, November 4th. LSU will be here in Tuscaloosa. Hurts on the run, and it was well blocked. And look at him stride close to the 10 yard line. Devontae Smith, the freshman receiver, did a nice job opening that up. This is a design quarterback draw. He's going to follow Damian Harris through the hole. And then there's Smith, number six, the wide receiver, getting a good, clean block on Hampton. Just watching Jalen Hurts run the football with patience, with vision, setting up blocks. So difficult to defend. Here he is again, straight up the middle. And a touchdown for the tie. Ten yard touchdown run for Jalen Hurts. We talked to Wesley McGriff last night about Jalen Hurts. He says you can't stop this kid. He saw him last year as a co-defensive coordinator at Auburn. That game he beat him throwing. Tonight, a little bit of everything in the power that he runs with. Not only speed, but power. Tremendous lower body strength. The ability to break arm tackles and in the red zone when you have a quarterback who can run like that it just gives you a whole different type of offense and McGriff the opposing defensive coordinator made that comment said you can't defend him 
You can hope to disrupt him. You can hope that he makes bad decisions. Yeah. We haven't seen any of that in this first he half. He made Todd. one bad decision and he got away with it. That's right. Ball that could have been intercepted. Everything else, he's been beautiful. He knows when to run and when not to run. His decision making, outstanding. And the wide receivers know when he gets in the secondary, if they hold blocks, he's going to make it an even bigger play, maybe a touchdown. He's not always scrambling the run. Sometimes he's leaving the pocket, keeps his eyes downfield, and making throws, spreading the ball around, distributing the football to playmakers. His decision making tonight, outside of the one, has been outstanding. And then in the red zone, when your quarterback can run with that kind of power, very, very difficult to stop. Look what he's done tonight. Coming up on 200 passing yards, couple of touchdown passes, has six on the year, and now four rushing touchdowns on the year. Holly. Well, there's a reason that Jalen Hurts looks very calm and organized and smooth tonight. He has a Friday ritual that helps get his mind right. He says he doesn't have class on Friday, so he actually cleans his apartment. I'm talking vacuuming, sweeping, mop, the whole nine yards. Gets his apartment nice and clean while blaring old school Isley Brothers. Uh, Todd knows the other one. Frankie Beverly and Mays, I think, was the one. Oh, That's does, yeah. oh let me say, does Todd ever know Frankie Beverly and Mays based on our ride in the car last night as he's belting it out from the back seat? We'll talk more about that in a moment, but first, Adnan. <laughs> yeah, Isley Brothers, a yeah. little reverent Al little Green. Reverend. Uh, cleaning his apartment on yeah. Friday mornings, just getting in the mood is Jalen Hurts, Todd. Well, he, he is so smooth. I mean, I just like watching how he plays because he is unflustered. I mean, he, I can remember watching him against Ole Miss a year ago when he got hit and fumbled. They returned it for a touchdown, put him down 21 points. He never missed a beat. Wilkins. Struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage as Deshaun Hand came up with the tackle. You know, and the other thing you love about him when we talk to the coaches about him, they say he's a gym rat. He he has really embraced the whole studying of the game and, and wanting to be a great decision maker. He has the physical tools, no question. But the mental piece and the preparation piece is where he's really stepped up his game this year. Wilkins again on the ground as he is able to spin free from Deron Payne. Ole Miss came in number one in the SEC in total offense. They're averaging 427 passing yards per game. As they swing it this time, and it's Sweeney. Out beyond the 40. Another tackle by Minka Fitzpatrick. You know, I, I think that this team, and Nick Saban said, you know, they don't really have that alpha dog leader like they've had on past teams, but I think they have some outstanding quiet leaders. Jalen Hurts is that guy on offense, and Minka Fitzpatrick is that kind of guy on defense. Listen, you could put duct tape across Minka Fitzpatrick's mouth, and I would take him over anybody any day of the week. He is a baller. As Averett. Comes up defensively against Metcalf. There is Minka. The All-America. And by the way, what a great guy. Every yeah. time we come down here, do a game, talk to us a lot about being on the mission trip to Costa Rica with the FCA this summer and his love of studying history. Third and seven now. Harrison, a gap pressure as Patterson can't get away from Ronnie Harrison. Yeah, I don't like the idea of motioning to empty against Alabama because that just invites them to bring a pressure that you can't block. As soon as the back leaves the backfield, here comes Harrison in between two occupied linemen, and Shea Patterson has no chance. I think you got to keep that back in and have him block and not try to get him out in the pass route against this team on third down. As Gleason punts again, Ruggs back this time on the return. Well, 
Well, next week, the Paul Bunyan Trophy is going to be up for grabs. It is Michigan State and number eight, Michigan. And it's 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Did you see what Harbaugh did this week? They had a <laughs> cannonball contest. He went with the can opener. Why in the close, though? It's Harbaugh. I mean, that, that's just the answer to everything. When you say why and then fill in the blank. Coach Harbaugh. Always grabbing plenty of attention. We started off our year with seeing Michigan down in Dallas as they thumped Florida on that day. Hurts going to tuck and run. And there's an example of where he's effortless and just smooth, yeah. and all of a sudden, nine and a half, ten yards are underway. When to run and when not to run. When to scramble to throw, when to scramble to run. He has a very good feel for the game. Under a minute and a half before the half here as he gets it to Irv Smith. This is an opportunity now for Jalen Hurts to work their two minute offense. They do this every day against their number one defense, and that's tough sledding. They put that into the ground short of Calvin Ridley. Three timeouts remain, facing a third and six with a minute nine before the half. American League wildcard game will be coming to you Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Look forward to that. Excited to watch playoff baseball back in Ohio with the Indians. 75 offense, five yard penalty, third down. You know, it was interesting coming off that Vanderbilt game when it was as close to a flawless box score in performance as you could have. And you say, you can't maintain that. You can't look that good all the time. Right. They're pretty close here in this first half, good. Todd. Yeah, they've been good. They're efficient. They're efficient in all three phases of the game. So after the penalty, a third and 11 now for Hertz. And they go with Foster on an inside screen, and it was picked up very well that time by Woods. A really nice play by Woods. You have to be able to make tackles in space. Trayvon Diggs leaving the field on crutches. It's their primary punt return man. That's why Henry Ruggs was in the last punt return. Diggs will get a head start to the locker room. He's played some receiver. He's been in the rotation as a starting corner. Levi Wallace had the pick six earlier. J.K. Scott to punt away. He hasn't had many opportunities to boom him this year. 14 ticks of the clock before halftime here. I don't really even recognize J.K. Scott without the long hair. No, he's uh, well, he's locks. one of those guys too. I said it to you at practice the other day. We walked in. We've enjoyed watching his career. He, he's one of those guys you feel like he's played college football for yeah. about 10 years because he was so good as a true freshman. Yeah. Remember that memorable Sugar Bowl that you called with Alabama in the college football playoff, and he had such a great freshman year, and he continues to down here in Tuscaloosa as a six foot six senior from Denver Colorado he will be undoubtedly a pro prospect as a punter well, when you play defense like Alabama plays and then you have a punter to add to that you just wear people down with field position and that's what he gives you and they will just run things here before the half with Sweeney Alabama coaches are still coaching on that last play. One is their guys to try to rip that ball out. That is the end of the first half. 
Now I'm looking forward to seeing some of these highlights here with the guys in the studio, including the upset of LSU. So let's get it back to Adnan Ver. Gentlemen, take it away. Houndstooth meets Hottie Toddy. Here's Big Bo. Scoring. Tie. Bo Scarborough. The slam picked off by Wallace. Levi Wallace. Hurts to the end zone. Touchdown, Hale Hedges. Play action. Hurts. And another touchdown for the tie. Here he is again. Straight up the middle. And a touchdown for the tie. As we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Geico. 330 yards of total offense for the number one team in the country. Alabama is up 35 to 3 against a team who beat them two of the last three years, and last year was up 21 against them. And it'll be Bama. We'll get the ball first here. Rugs on the return. Joe and Todd with you. We'll check in on Holly with a moment. You look at some of the stats here, and they had the pick six, but also the Alabama defense, they sacked Patterson four times. Yeah. Well, they've just been a dominant team, the same way they were a week ago. I mean, they, they've averaged 8.7 yards per play. They've held Ole Miss without a touchdown, and now make it 32 quarters that they've played without turning the football over. So, I mean, their efficiency in all three aspects of the game is is pretty staggering. And Jalen Hurts had nearly 200 yards passing in that first half and 94 yards rushing as Damian Harris gashes him for a big chunk play. Look at Damian Harris to open up this second half. Ole Miss pressures their linebackers to the line of scrimmage, and when Bing Stukes can't make the tackle, Williams is into the second level of the defense in a hurry and turns a simple running play into a gash-type play to start the third quarter. 46-yard run for Damian Harris. Had a career-high 151 last week against Vandy. motion there false start 71 offense five yard penalty first down here's Baker the left guard now the only thing that has stopped Alabama tonight has been Alabama right? when they've had a couple penalties but they uh, have executed offensively in both the run and pass, and it all kind of revolves around their quarterback and the decisions he's making with the ball in his hands at the line of scrimmage. Hertz keeps on the read that time. See Kadir Shepard limping off the field there. Holly? spoke with Ole Miss coach Matt Luke at the half and he said that really this game comes down to third down right now. They have not been able to convert on third down and Alabama has converted on almost all of theirs. He says we just can't get off the field. He said we did a good job in the first half on their running backs and then the quarterback got loose. So they have got to tighten things up and get off the field on third down. Yeah, that's often the problem against Jalen Hurts, isn't it? A lot of that has to do with how much yards you need on third down too. And Ole Miss has been in more long yardage situations in Alabama. Second and 12 as Hertz glides his way and then is thrown out by Zedrick Woods. I think he might have missed this read also. He has not made very many mistakes tonight. I think Bo Scarborough, he could have kept it with him and he might have had a touchdown. He pulled the football instead. And this is the end of the play in the field of play. That's not a penalty. It just got leverage and got him while he was up in the air. Now leaves him with a third and eight. Hurt steps up and throws downfield to Robert Foster. As this will be incomplete. As he was out of bounds, Woods again was involved at the end of the play. 
Just couldn't get a foot down. Give different. credit to Woods for carrying him those extra three yards. Different in the NFL than it is in college football. You still got to get that foot down, even though there's a tackle at that point. J.K. Scott is the long place kicker for distance kicks, and this a 48-yarder. Starting punter. And let's see if he has it. Some funny action on it, but good enough. So that's the way they're doing it here at Tuscaloosa this year. Papanastis on the short stuff, J.K. Scott on the long stuff. Six foot six, a lot of leverage. And able to get it right in. Thank you, Adnan. Kelly Bryan having a similar stat line to Jalen Hurts tonight. Passed for just under 200, running for 94 against that Virginia Tech defense. Clemson in complete control there, and Bama in complete control here. Jones struggling to field that ball on the kick return and then tried to make the most of it out to the 16 yard line. Well, the interim head coach for Ole Miss is Matt Luke, and he has quite the family legacy in Oxford. His father, Tommy, played defensive back back in the mid 60s, was a good one. Matt himself was a center in the 90s. His brother Tom, look at the feet on Tom Blackwich, played some quarterback and currently part of the athletic department. And Tom's son, Hale, a wide receiver and special teams player. You saw there coming up with a block punt earlier in his career. I'm up on the sidelines now. And this trailing by 35. That's the Sean Hands comes up with the sack. Deshaun Hand was coming for the quarterback the whole way. He was not worried about the fake. He was going for the quarterback. He was playing backside in case the quarterback ran. When he saw that he was going to pass, he went right for him. Just good sound discipline on the backside by Deshaun Hand. Five sacks tonight for the Bama defense. Wilkins couldn't shake free of Isaiah Bugs. Five sacks tonight to see the season average. Defense is starting to get a little salty here. Had the return of Jennings and Evans, the linebackers. And now a third and 16. Always where they want to be. As they back off the pressure this time. And was thrown into the ground as he couldn't connect with Wilkins. Well, you think about this defense also. Two guys they were counting on to be great pass rushers. <laughs> Got hurt in the first game and are out for the rest of the year. Terrell Lewis and Christian Miller, two rangy edge rushers. And they had three guys drafted in the first round off of the defense from a year ago. And they just keep reloading. Leeson to punt yet again. As Ruggs comes up and fields it at the 45 with a running start, picks up a block and is inside the 30. True freshman in there returning punts as we saw Diggs on crutches headed to the locker room. 16 yard return from Ruggs. Let's go to the field to Holly. Well, Trevon Diggs will be out for this game with a lower leg injury. That's why you didn't see him out there returning those punts. He will not be returning again tonight, guys. I'm not able to tell you when that happened. I guess he got hurt on a play, came back, got his leg retaped, and then went back out and played some more. So we're not exactly sure when that injury occurred. At 38 to 3, you're going to hear a roar from the crowd because Tua Tonga-Vailoa, the true freshman quarterback, is now into the game. They love him down here in T-Town. Here's the prize prospect. And that should have been picked off as it was Jones breaking on the ball. But Tunga Bailoa is a true freshman from Hawaii. He got in last week against Vanderbilt. And what did he do? Oh, only this. Escaping the pressure, spinning around, and then throwing the dart to Devontae Smith for the touchdown pass. 
Yeah, it was his, actually his second touchdown pass of the ball game when he came in. Left-hander throws a really smooth pass. Very catchable ball. Najee Harris, five-star recruit. And gets it down to the 22-yard line. Tonga Vailoa comes from Hawaii. He was an early enrollee. The MVP of the 2016 Elite 11 quarterback competition. And they'll move the chains with a run from Harris. Holly. Well, to a Tago Bailoa, you said went to was from Hawaii. He actually went to the same high school, St. Louis High School in Honolulu, that Marcus Mariota, the Heisman Trophy winner, went to. He is thought to be the next Marcus Mariota. He's trying to fill his shoes. And a cool story, when Marcus gave him some of his own shoes, when Tua was in high school and said, here, I expect big things out of you, young man. And now here he is playing at Alabama. Most yeah. people thought he would end up on the West Coast playing somewhere. Instead, he's in Tuscaloosa backing up Jalen Hurts right now. As he spins ahead to the 11-yard line. And let me say this about him, too. I like the fact that the young man came to a place knowing who's ahead yeah. of him on the depth chart, wants to compete. It is that guy, Jalen Hurts. Not the same kind of runner as far as power that Jalen Hurts is. Maybe a little better pure passer. Hurts, by the way, did go over 100 yards rushing tonight. 10 carries for 101. As Harris will make it a first and goal. Najee Harris, true freshman from California. He was the 11th overall player in the ESPN 300, ranked as the second best running back nationally. And he just trots into the end zone. I mean, he made that look all too easy. Well, that's the second time on this drive that Alabama did that, and that was hurry to the line. They outflanked the Ole Miss defense. The Ole Miss defense is fatigued. And they snapped it quick before they were set. And Najee Harris gets an easy touchdown. Good use of the snap count by the young quarterback. Alabama scores again. With a true freshman quarterback and a true freshman running back coming right down the field. There's a number one next to their name for a reason. They are talented and they are deep. ESPN College Football brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy and Cheese It Grooves. Dang right it's a chip. Listen, they got some incredible cue down there. That's Dreamland Barbecue open in the 50s. The first one you saw is Archibald's Barbecue. I love myself some Archibald's, yes, but sir. did you hear the local news the other day oh, when yeah. we first got to town? Yeah, a little fire. No, no big deal. Well, no, there were two Just fire the engines, a truck company and a rescue truck and a battalion command vehicle that was sent to Archibald's. <laughs> they, but you know what they did they there? They never Archibald's? shut down, though. They, they were still selling ribs. Yeah, it's all carry out anyway. There's nowhere to sit in there and eat. So you just get it and go. That is Woodrow Washington, who owns Archibald's. He is an iconic figure in town. He's like, folks, we're good. We're just going to sell ribs in the parking lot. Don't mind the fire trucks at man. No doubt about it. Keep the talk of Alabama and Clemson going as well with what number one and two teams in the country are doing as you look at the top ten there, Todd. That game last night up on the Palouse was quite an exciting game. The upset of USC. Jordan Wilkins gets pushed back by Fitzpatrick. And Penn State rolled today. Saquon Barkley did his thing again, but bit showing us different dimensions today. Yeah, had an opening kickoff return for a touchdown, threw a touchdown pass. That's Deshaun Hand who's down on the ground. Not something you want to see if you're 
Alabama or an Alabama fan. We'll take a short break as they tend to Deshaun Hand. We'll check on him when we return. Alabama defensive end Deshaun Hand injured his left knee. The bad news for Alabama fans, he was not able to put any pressure on that knee as he was taken off the field into the medical tent. At 6'4", 290, it was all athletic trainer Jeff Allen could do with one of his assistants to get him off the field. They did some preliminary ligament stability tests on the field. They're doing further examination in the tent. That would be a huge loss, guys, because Alabama already down two starters on defense. They are thin on that side. And we mentioned Christian Miller and Terrell Lewis, two parts of that linebacker core who were lost in the opener against Florida State. Here's second and seven. Patterson floats it downfield to Knox. Knox is the guy on the cut block that was blocking Deshaun Hand. Wasn't an illegal block. Deshaun, Deshaun Hand just couldn't get his left leg out from underneath the block. 23 yard reception takes it just past midfield. As Wilkins finds some running room and spins his way for a 14 yard gain on the right side of that line. Pressure off the edge with Fitzpatrick. Not much. Against Isaiah Bugs. Ole Miss came in with all the gaudy stats offensively. And look at that right column ledger there yeah. of the reality of tonight, Tom. Well, this is A, it's their first SEC opponent, and B, it's Alabama. <laughs> Neither one of those add up. I mean, they played a couple FCS teams, they played Cal, and this is their first real defensive test, and Alabama's been dominant. Patterson with a lot of time and still looking to extend the play. And it was South Alabama, UT Martin, then the loss at Cal when they blew a nine point halftime lead. A big part of that was the loss of their center, Sean Rawlings, who was back in action tonight. When they lost him the second half against Cal, they were really discombobulated up front in their pass protections. Tonight, they just have kind of been manhandled. By a superior Alabama team. A third and nine, and they are 0 for 9 on third downs against this Bama defense. The average yards they've needed is 9.4 yards. That's real tough sledding against this defense. Thrown to the inside of Metcalf as a flag is down. And he's back at the 41 yard line. Result of the play is fourth down. We have a sideline warning, the first of the game, Alabama. Yeah, Saban says, What? You want to run that by me again? Bill Lamagne, that is a point of emphasis this year, is it not? Well, the sideline warning has been there for a number of years, but what they're asking the officials to do is keep that sideline clear. If you're out there, you don't belong there, we need to move you back. Fourth and five. Patterson. Just gets rid of it at the last second, but a little too much on it for Jefferson as Keith Holcomb was coming in. Really nice disguise by Alabama's defense. There's Deshaun Hand leaving the field on the cart. And another Alabama defender down. That's Isaiah Bugs, Todd. Yep, another defensive lineman. Actually, the guy in for Deshaun Hand. He's up on his own power. That's a good sign as he's able to walk himself off, but this is of great concern to Sean Hand. A starting defensive end. They've long considered him a starter, even though he's been rotating in in recent years, of course, Jonathan Allen, all the talented players they've had there. And we will wait to get word in the coming days as to the realities of this leg injury. 
with Deshaun Hand. As a turnover on downs. And Josh Jacobs to the outside. And here goes Josh Jacobs. No matter who is in at running back for Alabama, it has been the same story. Well, because of their depth at running back, these guys are fresh. This is a worn out Ole Miss defense and fresh running backs for Alabama. And once Jacobs got to the perimeter, he turned it into a huge game. There goes hands into the locker room. 45 yard run for Josh Jacobs to a Tonga Bailoa at quarterback for Bama. Freshman, lefty, going to crank it up and completes it to Ridley, who dives ahead to the three-yard line where it'll be first and goal. Ridley wanted a touchdown. 16 career touchdowns. He's tied for fourth all time with Ozzie Newsome. And he wanted to get that one in the end zone. Tonga Bailoa scores it on the ground. And Alabama is over half a hunch. Well, a great solid night for this Alabama offensive line as well. We've seen a backup quarterback, backup running backs. I think that first team offensive line will find their way to the sidelines now for the rest of the evening. Very workmanlike, efficient effort by that group up front. This is feeling like a really long night for the Ole Miss defense, isn't it? A little Hawaiian punch across the goal line. From here in T-Town, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Alabama's last loss to an unranked team came at the end of 2007. They have now this season outscored opponents 66 to zip in the third quarters of games. over half the games that Alabama has played under Nick Saban 52 percent of the games they have held their opponents to 10 points or fewer and they're working on another one tonight Just amazing consistency of performance Scott hangs this up high to the 10 yard line where Jones returns it from there as he wiggles his way out to the 26 yard line. Of course, week four NFL Sunday is coming your way. You want to be on ESPN come Sunday morning because it's a new time and a new team with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern, led by our longtime friend Samantha Ponder. I'll get you all the injury updates and previews right up until kickoff. And then Redskins Chiefs on Monday Night Football, and coverage will begin with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN. How about the rookie sensation Kareem Hunt, what he's been able yeah. to do? You had him in your fantasy team, you're doing really well. Jordan Wilkins with one little jump cut, and another good move as he's past midfield. As a big gainer from Wilkins for 46 yards. Well, Alabama with a lot of backups in. Ole Miss with their starters in. Nice little jump cut right at the line of scrimmage. He made two guys miss in open field. Chris Allen, the first guy from his defensive end spot, really faked out. Freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That won't look good on film tomorrow. Wilkins looking to add to his totals. He backs up for a moment. You know, if you're Ole Miss right now, Joe, this is just a matter of playing this thing out and continuing to compete. Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, Matt Luke, the head coach, they want to see guys that are going to continue to fight and compete and try to make plays. You know, with everything that Ole Miss has been through in the course of the past year, just having the proper disposition, the right mentality is so critical. Matt Luke talked about that with us. He said, listen, the kids have been through a lot. It's important that they work from the inside out and create an us against the world type mentality. And he feels they've been able to do that, at least internally there in Oxford. 
You know, that's one of the things that, that happens in the world of athletics. You know, you have the ability to kind of circle the wagons, stick together, go through difficult times together, and, uh, and come out stronger on the other end of it. Third and 11. Alabama's done a really good job for the most part of not letting these dangerous wide receivers get beyond their defense. Patterson put it right on A.J. Brown, but he couldn't haul it in. You know, Luke also said, hey, the biggest challenge throughout of this, I, he believes they are playing for each other. He says the biggest challenge is keeping them insulated from all the outside stuff, the outside noise. There's been so much criticism and everything with the NCAA infractions and notice of allegations and the ongoing investigation, but keeping them insulated from all that is a challenge. Well, it's a cloud. You know, it's a cloud over your program. It's a cloud over you as a, as a team. But you can only worry about the things you can do something about. Fourth down and 11. And that ball was picked off by Wallace again. Levi Wallace had a pick six earlier, and now the interception here in the third quarter. The first interception, Levi Wallace had to fight a receiver for the ball. This time he just had to catch one because Shea Patterson threw it right to him. He was forced out of the pocket. Levi Wallace stepped right in front of two receivers and collected his second interception of the night. For Alabama, that is their eighth interception on the season. And again, they have now played 33 quarters without a turnover on offense. Puts them at a plus 19 in turnover margin since the first half of the Auburn game a year ago. As if they need any more advantages. Tungavailoa. And he's going to tuck and run. And pretty shifty, isn't he? Another first down from the freshman. 14-yard run. Flag is down at the end of it. He had two options there. He could have thrown to his outlet receiver, Jacobs, the back, or run. Made the decision to run, and I think a late hit at the end of the play. Tua did not slide. He went is a head first. first. After the play, personal foul. Targeting against the runner. Contact to the head and neck area. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. This play is now under video review. At the end of the play, sometimes you see a quarterback slide feet first. He dives forward head first. And after he's on the ground, there's the contact around the head area. Not that defender, this one right here. Let's bring in our rules expert, Bill Lamagne, longtime official in the Big Ten. Billy, what do you see? I see a late hit. He's in there and hits him late. I still don't see the targeting. Yeah. Uh, as, as we'd expect here. Uh, there probably was some brushing through the head neck area. Uh, I expect again, I expect replay to reverse this. You see, Gates came in there, but his back end hits the ground before it then makes contact with Tonga Vailoa. Well, so that'll be the second reversal of a targeting call on the field that we have had tonight. You know, this is the second week Gerald Hodges has been with us, and he's been busy on these targeting calls. And he, I think he's done an outstanding job the last two weeks. Gerald Hodges, the SEC official, upstairs with replays. John McDavid, the referee, down on the field. And, of course, the video command center, just about 45 minutes away in downtown Birmingham, a spectacular venue of technology they have built there with Steve Shaw overseeing everything at SEC headquarters. There is the difference between last season and this season. Number of targeting calls we've had. After video review, there is a foul for a late hit personal foul on the runner. However, there is no foul for targeting. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced. There is no disqualification. Well, again, I think that's correct. I think they, they administered that the correct way. There was a late hit. And no targeting, and so Alabama in outstanding field position again here. 
after the scramble and the penalty. So a first down with that guy leading the way to a Tonga Vailoa, the freshman quarterback from Hawaii. Josh Jacobs. Although gain about three yards that time. Flag is down as Gates made the tackle. Holding. 74 offense. 10 yard penalty. First down. Jedrick Wills is another good looking freshman who's playing right tackle. He's from Lexington, Kentucky. And coaches feel he's going to be excellent. He just needs to keep getting more experience. So a lot of the freshmen getting playing time here with this lopsided score. Yeah, there's the starting offensive line watching together. I think they were impressive tonight. This is a group that's getting better and better each week. Makes for a first and 20 the pitch to Jacobs. As he gets down to the 20 yard line Ken Webster with the tackle. Jacobs pulled a hamstring back in fall camp kept him out of the first couple games. Uh, he has been working his way back in. Had the touchdown reception earlier tonight. As Najee Harris checks in. Harris built a little more in line with Bo Scarborough or Derek Henry big body guy at over 6 2 and 230 pounds. And here he goes. He's just inside the 10 yard line. Well, you can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live. It is the ESPN app, and on a day like today, you cannot go without it. Download the ESPN app to start streaming right now. And if you did, then you can be checking out Nick Saban and this dominant team while perhaps you are watching. Texas A&M and South Carolina fight it out right to the end as the Aggies came up with the win and now they stand at four and one waiting for this Alabama team to come to College Station. Incomplete as he was looking Ruggs way. The whole goal unit was Trying to make their way to the field, and I think Nick Saban told Brian Dable, "Let's just go ahead and run another play here on fourth down." I'm going to bet that they run it this time, though. I don't think Nick liked the fact that Tua pulled that one and tried to throw it. Could be a quarterback run, but I don't think they'll throw the football here. Fourth and two. And sprint to the left. And throws it into the end zone to Ruggs for a touchdown. Yet another great looking freshman player, Henry Ruggs. You mentioned that Tua throws such a catchable pass. It's just a, a soft, easy throw to, to catch. Bides time, rolling out, waits for Ruggs to uncover, and then gives him a nice, easy ball to catch right across the goal line. Ruggs had a nice block on the Harris run a couple plays ago and that time gets to finish it with the touchdown catch. And this is getting downright silly. Let's look at the storylines in college football this weekend. USC went down tumbling on the Palouse. It was a thriller for Mike Leach and the Cougs. Georgia continues to impress as they went to Knoxville and did damage, as does Bryce Love, setting a school record with 300 yards rushing. And LSU, I don't know how they're going to explain that one down there in Baton Rouge. I was so impressed when we saw Georgia last yeah. week. Very similar to kind of where Alabama was in the early stages of Saban, putting in the same pieces of the puzzle, yeah. great at linebacker, deep at running back and they play on their terms. Yeah, they're not quite there in terms of the physicality right. on the on the lines of scrimmage, but they're getting there. Of course, Kirby Smart was with Nick Saban for so long, but right now, based on what I've seen, 
I don't know if there's anybody in this league that is at this level that can, can hang with Alabama. But I think Georgia is a team that is going to continue to grow and get better. Auburn, I think, has really made a lot of corrections and improvements since their game against Clemson. And they look like a much different football team. But Alabama, they are at a different level. Oh, no doubt. They're in their own universe when it comes to sizing up the SEC teams. I just think it's clear right now that Georgia is yep. the team in the East. Yep. And that as every week goes on and Fromm gets more and more confidence as a freshman quarterback and the other pieces come together. Yes, the Auburn defense will be a very tough test for them. It'll be a very good matchup. But if they stay the course, I very much yeah. look forward to seeing what Atlanta will look like for the SEC championship. Yeah, I like I like what Georgia looked like. I like their talent, their depth at running back. The quarterback will continue to grow. They've got to stay healthy on defense in some key spots. Patterson, speed option there with Penniman. That's what he feel to Holly. Well, Ole Miss will try to improve after this showing, but Shea Patterson and wide, his wide receivers really trying to get some good chemistry. In this offseason, they had to get up at 6.30 in the morning for conditioning, so they all met at 5.30 in the morning to watch film. They bonded over those early morning sessions, and they'll continue to try to improve. And he has great work ethic. Everybody in Oxford raves about him. As he takes a shot downfield, and a great effort that time by Lodge. You know, DeMarcus Lodge did a really nice job of waiting to the last minute to go for the football. He's working on Tony Brown. Watch him wait for the last minute and then go high to make the catch over Tony Brown. Pushed off a little bit, but went to the high point for the catch. Nice work there. Penniman trying to bounce it. Instead, he loses the football and had a retreat and jump back on it. That was Chris Allen who came in and forced the fumble for the tie. Again, very difficult to try to bounce the football outside against this defense. You got to just get north and south. And Penniman very fortunate that he was able to fall on that football. Second 15 for Patterson. As he avoids the rush and then overthrows it, trying to swing it to Sweeney. Well, right there, you see, when we talked to Jeremy Pruitt, he said, you know, this guy extends a lot of plays, but if we flush him out, we'd like to make him roll to his left. He's not as efficient or effective throwing the football when he moves to his left as he is to his right. That time, rolling to his left, over through the pass. Third and 15. They've yet to convert a third down. They're 0 for 11 in the ballgame. Make that high, but play. caught by Jefferson. Fourth down for Phil Longo, his first year as the play caller at Ole Miss. Had a record setting offense at Sam Houston State. Well, the Southeastern Conference is a little bit different than the Southland Conference. Sure is. Longo has had a very interesting ride to arrive at the SEC. As a high school coach in New Jersey, was an offensive coordinator in JUCO, had a run among some Division three schools as this fair catches inside the 10, and then had the success that you mentioned in the FCS at Sam Houston State. Different beast, isn't it? End of three, 59 to three tie. Hey, reminder, after we're done, don't miss Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt. SVP is going to get you all squared up on everything in college football, Major League Baseball, and the President's Cup of Tour. Sports Center at night with SVP is coming up next on ESPN.
Joe Todd and Holly here in Tuscaloosa start of the fourth quarter with the tide rolling much like they did last week mm -hmm. at Fandy. Robinson couldn't get anywhere there so 59 points on the board tonight last week was 59 zip against Vandy and you got to go back to 1945 first time since 45 that Bama's had back to back 50 plus point games in SEC competition that guy a big part of the reason why they are finding their stride offensively Brian Dable a new offensive coordinator by way of the New England Patriots after all the drama with Lane Kiffin and then Steve Sarkeesian who left for the Atlanta Falcons play calling job Dable has given them some solid ground and foundation Brian Dable he was first with Nick Saban back at Michigan State was a graduate assistant in the late 90s and then Long run in the NFL, 17 seasons in the NFL, including 11 with the Patriots, and that'll get you a lot of jewelry. Five Super Bowl championships, and now he is enjoying his time here in Tuscaloosa. You know, the other new coach on the offensive side of the ball this year that has come in is Mike Loxley. He's the assistant offensive coordinator and receivers coach, has some head coaching experience, been in college football for a long time. This offense is very efficient right now. Third and four as Keith was wide open and Tonga Vailoa was able to connect with him. 21 yard reception to Derek Keith, the junior from Cincinnati. Valuable playing time right now for some of these backups on the Alabama offense. That's why you're still seeing them throw the football and running their stuff. You don't want to put these guys in. You want to get them real game experience running the stuff that you want them to run and not just mop things up, even though you have the huge lead. Here's the local guy, Brian Robinson. He was cut down. Holly? I mean, I just marvel at this psychology of Nick Saban, how he's able to motivate his team. When we were at practice on Thursday, he gathered the team together, and afterwards, we could hear him really getting after the team. He was talking to them about how to be motivated for this game. Coming off that 59 to nothing win over Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt had said some things the team didn't like, and they reacted and responded. Well, he was now challenging them to respond just because they hadn't beat Ole Miss like this in a long time. The last three games have been close shootouts, two losses. He wanted a definitive statement against this Ole Miss team, and that's what he was challenging his team with. And boy, have they responded. The psychology is often front and center with Coach Saban. In fact, Holly, as you know, they give a personality test, a psychological exam to understand how each player thinks and learns. And it was that guy, Minka Fitzpatrick, who actually, in grading it out, is most similar to Nick Saban. <laughs> we asked Nick what he thought about that. We asked Minka, too. Minka thought it was pretty cool. We asked Nick. He said, I feel sorry for the kid if that's the, if that's the case. That is a driven guy. Perfectionist, yeah, probably so. Demanding. Tonga Vailoa. Weaving his way and sliding down you at see, the 40. You see how he stayed in bounds, too. Just well coached, understood the situation, get the yardage and get down, protect yourself, and keep this clock running. See how relaxed he was even at the end of that run. Mouth is closed, not even breathing hard. There's something about Hurts and Tonga by Loa, <laughs> the way they carry themselves. Yeah. So unaffected. Had the touchdown run earlier coming in for Jalen Hurts. Hurts left the game with over 100 yards rushing. Here's the pitch now to Harris. And he really likes to jump over and hurdle would be tacklers. We've seen that so far this season.
Brian Robinson checks in as the running back now. He's a true freshman from nearby Hillcrest High School. Up right here in Tuscaloosa. Another early enrollee who has taken advantage of getting all those spring reps. He squares up the shoulders. A little extra yardage there. It'll be third and short. Well, this run game coming into the ball game, Alabama averaging 303 yards per game rushing, sitting right at 332. And closing in on 600 total yards for the game. Robinson again, this time to the 20. And the beat just goes on and on and on. Error free again with no turnovers tonight as Alabama's offense. Came in without turning the ball over in their last 30 quarters. That goes back to last season, longest streak in school history. Hertz had a second quarter interception in the Iron Bowl. And since then, they've outscored their opponents 353 to 107. And they add to that right here. And straight up the middle this time is Ronnie Clark. There's Scotty Cochran, who's Mr. Motivation, strength and conditioning coach here at Alabama, and such a key component to Nick Saban's success through the years. Well, those strength coaches all across America in college football, one of the most important hires, maybe as important, if not more important, than either coordinator that you hire as a head coach, because they have more hands-on contact with your players than any assistant coaches do. The other coaches are restricted by hours of meeting, but not strength coaches. Here is Clark as he gets inside the 10. You know, and, and he's just one of those guys, he sets the standard, including doing this. Walking up to somebody and saying, no, you will not be texting right now. You're going to yep. watch this football game. He just took it and put it in his back pocket. He puts the four fingers up the entire fourth quarter, whether it's 59 to three or three to three. That's his M.O. First and goal, gonna run Clark again. And Bama is gonna score again. And I think they can write in whatever number they yeah. want on that scoreboard tonight. And you know what? Th this is as much on Ole Miss. I mean, you don't want to say, okay, for the last quarter, we're just going to take a knee every play on offense. We're going to run. We're not going to rub it in your nose, but you better show up and try to stop us. Because we have backups and freshmen and whatnot in the game, and we want them to play and experience success. You got to go six deep on the running back depth chart to get to Ronnie Clark, a guy who this spring when I was down here visiting the team was lining up at tight end. Now he's got some running back in yep. his pass, but yeah, that's on the Ole Miss defense. Yep. When you're putting in Ronnie Clark to run out things here in the fourth quarter, that's the reality of it. Sixty-six for number one. When Alabama senior running back Ronnie Clark ran that ball into the end zone, the entire team for Alabama ran down to greet him and celebrate with him for very good reason. That is the first career touchdown for this senior. Two torn Achilles. It has been a rocky road for him. They got him very close last week against Vanderbilt, but he got to the three-yard line, and Nick Saban said, take a knee. So this week, they finally got the senior into the end zone. It has been a very touching scene here on the Alabama sidelines. They are thrilled for this young man. That is nice to see. Yeah.
Closing in on the 19th straight SEC win is Mighty Bama. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Golden Corral's all-new Smokehouse. Go back nine years, and Bama's been the number one team for 55 games, and they're about to have a record of 49-6 and six during that stretch as the number one team in the country because this has been a bludgeoning against Ole Miss 66 points, the most since 79. And Sweeney can't find much there with Carter making the tackle. Reminder that Tuesday night be the AL wild card Twins and Yankees. That'll be 8 o'clock on ESPN. A one game playoff. Should be great to just sit back and take that in. And there's a tackle for a loss that time with Quinnen Williams coming in. Redshirt freshman from Birmingham. You know, I would say the only thing at this point, Tess, that, that would concern me if I'm Nick Saban or anybody on the Alabama staff, I think offensively they are very, very well positioned. I think they are getting better and better. I think their offensive line has put two outstanding games back to back, and their skill players are who they are. But defensively, the injuries to their defense, some key guys are starting to add up. There's the shovel pass that doesn't get anything as Williams was right on top of it. Deshaun Hand was taken off in a cart, and as Holly noted, he wasn't able to put weight on that left leg. And then Miller, we mentioned Christian Miller and Lewis. They've been out since the Florida State game. And then Trayvon Diggs, who started at cornerback against Florida State, he was on crutches earlier as well and headed off to the locker room. Again, you remember, even though you recruit young guys, this team had a lot of guys drafted off their defense a year ago, including three first-round picks. Todd, you know what is coming up on this broadcast? When we come back from this very short break, I am going to task you with handing out the big boy pants. Who's going to win in the BBPI? Todd's got that next. Well, my big boy pants index tonight can only go to one guy, I think, and because I've never seen a quarterback who was also a state champion shot putter or a power <laughs> lifter. But Jalen Hurts did that in high school, and tonight, in his second year as a starting quarterback for Alabama, he ran and passed his offensive football team into a huge win against Ole Miss. I mean, he uh, he just outperformed the entire Ole Miss team by himself. 100 yard, 101 yards rushing, nearly 200 yards passing, and uh, did it all with that cool demeanor that we've come to expect from Jalen Hurts. Like the kind of guy who vacuums in his dorm listening to the Isley brothers and the Reverend Al Green. Holly? Well, probably the most special thing Jalen Hurts did tonight is spend some time with a young lady on the sidelines before this game. As he came out, he spotted this little girl in a wheelchair who has just been diagnosed with DIPG. That is an aggressive brain tumor, just a recent diagnosis. And she had a special little bracelet that she wanted to give to Jalen. It says Aubrey's Army. She is gathering an army of people to fight for her in this fight for her life. And Jalen took the bracelet, put it right on his wrist, and he is now part of Aubrey's Army. Oh, that is just wonderful. We will all be part of Aubrey's army and praying for her and her fight. Bam is going to coast this thing in to a dominating win as mom Pamela hurts. Check social media. What are folks saying about my son? Make sure everything's good back in Houston area back home. 
then they will have a home game for themselves next week. College Station. I'm Texas digging Mom's outfit too. She's got the, 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 the black jersey. She's got the, she's hound's got tooth the hound's hand. tooth working. She's all in. I can't get enough of seeing shot put video. Yeah. And he's a, a quarterback. quarterback. Listen, right. quarterback. We, we've often said of like a nose tackle or a good middle linebacker or a fullback. Boy, right. he was great track and field with the shot put or the discus or the hammer, but to see a quarterback doing it. 46 feet, 11 and one quarter inches, a district champion in the shot put. Also threw the discus, ran on the relay team, and was a power lifter. I mean, then when he got to Alabama, Scott Cochran had to kind of get him out of the weight room when they did all the power lifts. He says, you, you know, you don't need to, to do it anymore. You've already, you know, hit crazy numbers on squat, crazy number on deadlifts and power cleans and just do some maintenance stuff to make your strength as functional as you can to be a college quarterback. Fourth and one here with Tonga Bailoa and Ronnie Clark as Clark maybe short of that mark to make. Had the touchdown earlier. And Hertz mentioned to us yesterday, he said deadlift 590, he told us. Yeah. My eyes would pop out if I tried to do five. <laughs> I mean, give him that first down there on that mark. You know, you're going to want to tune in to Scott Van Pelt and get you set with the entire day of action. And of course, Adnan, Joey, and Jesse on college football final. I think there's going to be a lot of folks asking what in the world is happening on LSU and what do they do moving forward. They lost to Troy tonight, folks, at home, 24 to 21. And of course, Michigan State and Michigan will be next week on ABC. Eighth ranked Michigan, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Quinn Blackledge will be in the house, in the big house. Part of that Michigan student section. All those questions about all the new faces on the Michigan defense. Donnie Brown can coach himself yeah. some defense. They've got some speed too now. We saw them that first week. They are a fast bunch. Well, Spain, of course, took the big hit a week ago. Horn came in. We are going to be down in College Station for the ESPN primetime game. That, don't look now, but the Aggies team, you take away blowing that big lead against UCLA, they are 4-1. and one. Yep. Beat South Carolina again tonight, so Alabama will be going up against A&M. Alabama's 3-0 and at Kyle Field. Of course, Manziel, that Heisman year, was the big blemish that everybody remembers that was here and there are the Aggies awaiting November 4th is always a circle the date but perhaps not this year LSU Mississippi State has looked much different the last two weeks as they got beat up by Georgia last week and then Auburn today and Auburn has looked much different the last few weeks offensively Jarrett Stidham starting to kind of hit their stride or hit a new strike. Jalen Hurts ran for over 100 yards, had a couple of touchdown passes, a touchdown run, and Bama. Boy, oh boy, were they something. 19 straight SEC games now, 69 straight wins against unranked opponents. Impressive as always. Ole Miss had had their number winning two of the last three and was up by 21 last year. Not tonight. They rolled. Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt is coming up after these messages. Hey, Scotty and Stanford Steve, if you had Ole Miss plus 60, you're a loser tonight. Take it away, gentlemen, after the break.